the oh, treetop man. I don't villages. know what his opponent's playing, but I see an Ensoul artifact. Yes. And I'm all Yes, in. that's where we are. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hoping it's an affinity deck and not a Tezzeret deck. Hate watching Tezzeret decks. This might this might feature my, my number one favorite card. Which is don't tell me. Ornithopter. Yeah. Yeah. Um but the other way to play your Jund aesthetic is to have uh, only OG fetches, only Modern Masters 1 Tarmogoys, because they have like the faded color palette compared to Future Sight ones. And then you have unglued lands with your original treetop villages. And you have sort of that faded vintage right. feel. <laughs> Otherwise, you go towards the more modern, like I said, the, the saturated color feel. Or you, you buy the cheapest card treetop. you can find because Tarmogoys are ridiculous. Mario, that is just so... <laughs> Pusillanimous of you. I don't know what that word means. It means small-minded. Okay. Sound it out. Darth Meadows in the background. There, yeah, Robert was in the background. He's playing Darth Meadows. Meadows. Robert's actually playing standard tonight as. Oh, and he's got the hood up. He's he's uh, playing standard as. Uh, I guess that's what seed he's in for the the team constructed event next week. Which I thought he was playing legacy. I don't understand. I thought he told me he was playing legacy. Maybe he found someone who actually is knows how to play legacy. I certainly don't. <laughs> Mario and I are actually going to team constructed and. I was gonna play Legacy, but then Mario's Mono Black Eldrazi deck became totally antiquated in modern. Yeah. Because of the printing or the unbanning of Jason Bloodbraid. It actually has no. I have not. I have not played against Jund. Well, I played against Jason once and beat it, but I have not played against Jund. But I just don't. I just, it just doesn't seem. Good. It, it doesn't seem good. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm probably gonna get back on my. I was gonna play four color loam, in Legacy, and Mario was gonna play modern. But I'll probably play the modern split now, and Mario's gonna play the four color loam. Yeah. And he's probably much better at it than I am. Um, so let me tell you, if you're jumping in a legacy, do not jump in with four color alone. It's probably <laughs> the most complicated. Well, not the most. It's but not it's, the most. It's a fairly complicated. It's up deck there. Like certainly, that. certainly brainstorm decks have their own yeah. level of. For one, just casting the card brainstorm and using the card Jace can be pretty pretty difficult. Um, but as far as a non-blue deck goes, four color loam yeah, is, is. There's a lot. There's a lot of moving Ooh. parts. Yeah. Um, a lot of moving parts. <laughs> But uh, I think we're going to do good. Jake Valentine, if you guys know Jake, is playing our standard leg. Yeah. He's going to play, uh, I think, blue-black. Blue black. Yeah. Control or mid-range? Not sure he's decided yet. Maybe we shouldn't re relinquish that information. Oh, yeah. We got We want yeah. to surprise people. Uh, I'm playing mono-white uh, <laughs> Isochron Scepter. Big I'm playing <laughs> Eldrazi and Legacy. Oh, yeah. All right, so this looks like Affinity. It looks like traditional Affinity with maybe like one, one, we just yeah, one, it, yeah. one or two Ensel artifact. This card is so good on Darksteel Citadel, especially in this Jund meta. Path is kind of on a downswing because of Jund, and there's fewer Abzan decks. There are still Snap Path decks, such as Blue White, such as this Blue White deck. <laughs> but I definitely think Ensel is a good main board choice for Affinity right now. Jund like, uh, like so Jund has nothing to do against a Insul artifact yep. on a Darksteel Citadel. So this thing's already getting in there for five. The quick four-turn clock. Yeah, this is uh, this is the downside of playing just blue-white control. Um, Jeskai has a great affinity matchup. Right. Yeah. Blue-white has a much more awkward affinity matchup. Yeah. Definitely um, depends if Patrick has his paths or not. Yeah, but it'd be great to have also Bolt and Electric. You know, blue-white just does not have a good spot removal. Um, you can play, like, Blessed Alliance in the main. Um, oh, Patrick's drew Negate. That does not seem Oh, ideal. that is really bad. <laughs> See, like, negate is something that Jeskai Control would never play mainboard. All right. Ooh, second cranial play. Oh, oh my goodness. Geez. And no removal still still from Patrick? Uh, I guess I guess the second one will get negated, but still. <laughs> See, Jeskai Control can't draw three cards without drawing a removal spell. Right. But Patrick has drawn, what, eight now? And uh, we got nothing. Well, we did. We were able to negate that, thankfully, for that's, Patrick. Yeah, that's fine. That's so fine. I, I wonder if Brent is going to animate... Like, looks like he did not animate the blink moth. <laughs> that, that might that might be the only relevant negate I've ever seen cast against Infinity. Yeah, I mean that was a good one. Uh, the turn the turn to negate for the for the second cranial plating. Oh, it looks like Brent. It looks like Brent has the Ensel in hand, so he could go for the kill here. He could he could uh, animate his Dark Steel Citadel and just get in there for ten. I really hope this is what happens. Uh, yeah. One, yeah. Two, yeah, that's exactly I guess, I guess ten. I think Patrick might have Snapcaster, so he could actually block, but and then s certainly lose. Yeah, the next turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah there's oh, nothing on, to get some out of this. I really want to see the Ensel put in some work. Oh, oh, it looks like we're tapping blue. Maybe. 
Yes. Oh, yeah. Swing for 10. <laughs> we saw the line. That's, that's a good line for sure. All right, let's do it. Yep, we're in there for 10. <laughs> There's Snapcast on uh, jump block duty. There you go. So uh, Brent will go up to, what, 33? <laughs> Man, maybe Patrick can just Supreme Verdict here. Just kidding. Just kidding. Dark you Citadel's can't invincible. beat Dark Steel <laughs> Citadel. Insult. Do we think Brent's playing more than one or two insults? Uh, maybe. I mean, uh, four seems pretty loose, but it <laughs> yeah. wouldn't be. I mean. Oh, d d Patrick has the Supreme Verdict, too. Uh, he, he did actually draw a Cryptic, though, which is good. But. So crypt Yeah, Cryptic does buy him time. I'm not sure how much buying time means. He Wait, has what to is, draw. Does Cryptic say tap all non-land permanents? No, uh, tap all creatures. Oh, okay. So it's solar oh, artifact yeah, yeah. as a creature. But that would be hilarious if it was. Yeah, you're right. It's just creatures, um, obviously. That would be kind of dumb. But so that's interesting, though. Patrick, with this cryptic, can actually. Well, there are a couple options here. Brent could have said go to combat and then let Patrick cryptic, and then Brent could have fired up the ink moth and, moth and got yeah. in for one damage. Um, that doesn't seem great. Well, uh, this does mean that Patrick isn't able. To what well, what it does mean is that Patrick can now try verdict. to draw a path. Yeah. No, he can verdict now. Oh, that was actually huge. Oh, he's bouncing Darksteel Citadel. Great. Tapping the team. Tap team right. bounce yeah. Darksteel Citadel. I, yeah, that's a good line. That's a great um, line. Yeah. Although he's but just he but he didn't get to draw a card. Yeah. So the fact that he didn't draw a card. But he has supreme verdict now. Right, but then he still he still has this Ink Moth Nexus. Yeah. And that doesn't take care of the cranial plating, right? So, do we still? How much damage can we get in for now? Because um, if we four, because we can, we can fire, we can fire up Ink Moth to put counters on. We can sack. No, we can't fire. We can't fire up Ink Moth in response to a supreme verdict. Oh yeah, <laughs> you're right. That would be, you can't do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> if, if Brent has another artifact, though, Patrick is just gonna be dead. And he's your welding jar. Welding jar. So yep. It. So that's that's game. Swing for five exactly. He can equip it, right? For yeah. He's yeah activate yeah. for one. Equip for one. Yep. All right. Well, it was a good effort, Patrick. I wonder if tap draw would have worked out better for him, which it would if his next card were a. Would path, yeah, but but then he still could have no, he still would have died to this line. Well, I don't know. There would have been one one fewer artifact because the dark seal citadel would have been in play. So True, maybe. Yeah. But Brent also missed a point of damage one turn when he attacked with Vault Scourge and didn't animate Blink Moth that was tapped to get an extra artifact. Yeah, which that would have also sure. mattered. So that was that was the kind of hand that that was really not. I mean, it was a good affinity hand in some sense, but a not a good hand against Chess Guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. Yeah. Uh, great hand against Blue White, though. Yeah. So, uh, what do we think Patrick is doing differently here? Out of the well, sideboard? I'm sure he has Stony Silence. Yeah, hopefully he's got Stony. Um, Jeskai players cut it, but most Blue White players right spreading seeds need also. it. I'm not sure. Actually, I don't. I don't, I don't think so because your opponent can actually fire up those lands and sack them to Ravager, and then you don't get to draw your card. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so that seems bad. Um. But uh, I think Patrick hopefully has, like, one Blessed Alliance or maybe even two out of the side. Those can be really good for some, uh, for some, especially against, uh, Blessed Alliance is great here against um, Darksteel Citadel. Uh, yeah, also, maybe, like, but also great against timely reinforcements or, yeah. I've seen some players playing Oust. So Oust, like Oust, is, Oust is pretty bad, um, <laughs> but I have seen it played. I've seen it, it used to be played in Esper Control. Um, and it also is played sometimes in like uh, like red white hate bears type decks where you're trying to blood moon your opponent but don't want to give him basically ends with path. Yeah. Um, Patrick, hopefully had I'm, I'm sure he has probably three to five in the main, but he definitely needs ghost quarters or field of ruin. I'm sure he's field of ruin or yeah. tech edge. Um, <laughs> I'm sure he has four field. Of, well, not four, but some number of field. Of well, the the pro the re this I I hate field of ruin. I think the card's it's bad. It's so much better than ghost quarter. Control. In this matchup, no, maybe this, this matchup, match this but. matchup is the reason that I okay. vehemently defend ghost quarter. Like, do you know how good Knight of the Reliquary ghost quarter is against this deck? Super good. But they just they do just you know how good they just animate their land and sacrifice in response. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <laughs> but like, so animating. Like animating their land, I mean, you're. I hate you, <laughs> but um, I don't know. To yeah, me, Ghost Quarter is definitely better in this matchup. To yeah, me, yeah, why, Billy, uh, 
Condem is played, you're you're not wrong, but I've actually like Gabriel Nasifu is a pretty avid blue white control player. I would say he's been playing oust oust recently. Yeah. In his in his control decks. Well, there's other there's one other great place where Oust shows up, and that's in your Grove of the Burn Willows, uh, uh, Kavu Predator deck, with uh, Fiery Justice. Do you mean Condemn? No, I thought Condemn gains them life. Oust also gains oh, okay. them life. Oust gives your opponent three life. Oh, okay. Um, and Condemn only gives A them. A few recent five O's had Oust. Yeah, that was. And Condemn only gives your opponent life if they're attacking with creatures, which if you're playing the Kabu Predator deck, might not be happening. Ophidian thinks that field is 1,000 times better than Ghost Quarter. Wow, I think that's the most idiotic thing I've heard in a long time. Um, Ghost Quarter, like, this this matchup right here is I would is say like 100 times, maybe at 1,000. This <laughs> this matchup right here is the reason... I mean, there are, I think there are a few reasons that, that Ghost Quarter is... Uh, I, I will, like, they're not... You can't say one's better than the other, but this is the reason... This matchup is the reason that Ghost Quarter is no, not obsolete in the format. Kit Yoza, thanks for the follow. Also, Ghost Quarter is Someone's really... Never played, have you never played a control deck before? I played, I played, I played, I played Blue, White, and Standard. I, <laughs> I, played, I played Grixis and Standard before that. I, uh, I haven't played a control deck in Modern, no. Well, then, maybe you don't, you don't have... The, the best basis. In your in your Naya Nightfall deck, sure Ghost Quarter is better, but not in this style. Deck. Well I, I understand the purpose of of Field of Ruin and why maintaining that land is good. Um, what I don't understand is Blue White Control's problem as a deck hey, we got over is having basis. clunky clunky draws and cards that fast decks can get under. And if you're worried about fast decks getting under you you know it because Field of Ruin is great in the long game, but in the long game is Blue White Control worried? No, why would blue-white control? You got the long game tied up. You got your Sphinx's Rev, you got your Jace, you got your Gideons. What you need to do is survive in the first four turns against Affinity. And Field of Ruin would have sucked ass there. Yeah. Ghost Quarter would have won you the game. As long as everyone's clear right now that Ghost Quarter would have definitely won Patrick the game there, and Field of Ruin probably would not have. All right, Brent took a mulligan at six here. Decided to keep. Also, Ghost Quarter is pretty sweet in, uh, in Taxes decks. Sure. Whereas uh, Leon and Arbiter does not like Field of Ruin. Yeah, that's true. There's <coughs> situations for both. Kit Yoza just subscribed. Thank you, Kit Yoza. Twitch Prime subscription. We definitely appreciate it. Um, since we have so many viewers here, uh, before we get into the heart of this game, I just want to mention that next week we will be featuring some uh, some Star City pros here on the stream. Uh, Ross Miriam, Brendan DeCanio, and Tannen Grace will be and here. Maybe and maybe Todd Stevens. Todd Stevens for a... Uh, to compete with some of the local players, so if you tune in next week, you'll see some more some more high profile action. As, as Todd Stevens, directions. what he thinks of Field of Ruin versus <laughs> Ghost Quarter, he knows the answer. Probably, he knows the answer. All right, well, we got an etched champion here on turn two from Brent. So this is a hand that's fairly susceptible to Supreme Verdict, but Brent does have the uh, the Ink Moth Nexus in play. So hopefully, we well, see a Patrick does have the. Oh, he's got a spreading seas, yeah. But unfortunately, it's just going to get sacrificed. Oh wait, no, it's actually going to be really good here. Yeah, it's going to be great here. <laughs> Yeah, I think we play it out. Oh, just passing. Okay, that's fine. We got a detention sphere we did not cast. I mean, it doesn't really have good targets. Got the Spire of Industry. And we got the Ensoul artifact. Are we going to Ensoul our... Oh, Ensoul Edge Champion. Edge Champion? No, that would be spicy. It's pretty good. We could also Ensoul our Ink Moth Nexus and just get, get in for five, five infect. Wow, that's actually a way you can, like, one-shot somebody with an Ink Moth, right? Cranial Plating plus Ensoul artifact. Well, like there are lots of ways to one-shot well, somebody sure. with an Inkmoth Nexus. <laughs> <laughs> we got... Negate on the cranial plating again? again yes. <laughs> I'm not sure I like... Okay, I guess we're going to animate Inkmoth. Were you going to say leaving in negate? No. Oh. Um, using both our colored sources to cast cranial plating. Oh, sure. But yeah. So we're swinging for... For three? There we go. Yep. <laughs> This, uh, interestingly, this S champion is not that, it's not that close to be, or not that far away from being taken off Metalcraft. Yeah. So we got Spreading Seas here, going to take out the Ink Moth. Unfortunately, if you Spreading Seas a Darksteel Citadel, it retains its artifact quality. Yes. Um, and the way that I would like that Spreading Seas to be represented on board would be for Patrick to leave it on his side but for Brent to just either flip it over 
especially since he has blue sleeves, uh, or to put the Spreading Seas as the land and then remove the Ink Moth Nexus so, from play. But this is fine too, I guess. We might see Brent go with the End Soul play here. I'd like to put it on the Darksteel Citadel again. Of course, that insulates him from Verdict. Nice, okay. It's a good line. It's risky against Path. Yeah, especially with that, that one Hallowed Fountain up. <laughs> but Patrick does have the uh, the Detention Sphere in hand, right? which can't take the Darksteel Citadel, but it can just take the End Soul Artifact off of the Citadel. So... Wall of Omen's doing work here. Blocking, yeah. That card, that card said uh, two mana, draw a card, gain five life. It's pretty good. What if we get that Wall of Omen's back later with an Ojitai's command? That would be incredible. To uh, to counter a hey, second Death Champion ruin. and bring it back. Well, let's uh, yeah, take out that Blink Moth, get enough, get our land back, so then we can catch the tensions for this turn. Seems great. Yeah, but what 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 else could we have cast this turn if we had five mana? <laughs> what? We could have ghost quarter and cast a four drop. You know, we could have we could have cast a Gideon. We could have cast a three drop Gideon and left up Gideon path. Would just instantly die. <laughs> we could have cast a three drop Gideon and left up path. The three drop Gideon. Yes, we could have cast a three drop Gideon. I wonder if Patrick has a a field of ruin ghost quarter split. Also, ghost quartering your own lands is pretty nice sometimes. Not in a control deck, but but sometimes it helps you logic not. Yep. Here is D Sphere. Patrick correctly snagging the uh, the end soul. Yeah. So unfortunately, he can't take the land. He just has to take the enchantment. Right. Because um, dead tension sphere will not hit an actual land. But it does mean if we ever remove Detention Sphere, we can uh, get our end soul back. <laughs> so, assuming that Patrick leaves the Detention Sphere on his side of the table with the end soul under it, I would love if we move the Spreading Seas also to our own side of the table. That That's really bugging you, huh? It's really bugging me. This is, Folks, if someone plays the Spreading Seas against you, flip your land over so you see the back side of the we, sleeve. We got a judge question. Judge but. question. Oh, Patrick's probably asking, if what, if it gets removed? <laughs> what do you... Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe he's asking if it retains being a... Oh, he is. He is, he is asking what will happen. What's he asking? If, if the D-Sphere gets removed, where does it go? Yeah, I think he, he does get to reattach it if, if he has a legal target. Yeah, it's just like uh, it's like getting Spreading Seas off his early Enchanter. Um, yes, or any aura. Obviously. Or any aura, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, auras are really, really confusing. But yeah, when they just come into play not being cast, they just attach to shit. There's another signal <laughs> They pest. just stick. So we're still just getting in there for three. Yeah, Patrick kind of needs that verdict. Uh, Patrick has a bajillion lands in hand. And there's a Serum Visions. Serum Visions, fine verdict. Could be good. The 200... Uh, the <laughs> I, I removed that message because it was he was like, he said something about like messaging him on Snapchat for, for nudes, so yeah, I, 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 timed, I timed that guy out for a little bit. <laughs> was, that, was, that, was that Billy Camino saying no, it, was, <laughs> it was Cheeks31. Cheeks31. Well, maybe that's a SpongeBob reference. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Man, more and more lands for Patrick. Oh, well, uh, good, yeah, also, he did draw Well, good thing Patrick's got so many lands and that he got even more lands with his Field of Ruin, you know? Yeah, otherwise Which is you would great. have an increased <laughs> chance of drawing further lands. <laughs> that's, that's right. Uh, oh, man. All right, so Cryptic there to have in the team. You know what I really like uh, about Ghost Quarter and Control decks is if you're playing blue-black control right now, the only correct way to play blue-black control is with three main board Shadow of Doubt. The only correct way. And that's Shadow, that's, of, Doubt, that's all, that's all Shadow of Doubt is literal god with four Ghost Quarters, that is and it's true, literal crap good. with four Field of Ruin. <laughs> yeah, well, right, because you... It's yeah. a symmetric effect. <laughs> um, yeah, if, if, if you ever play blue-black control with four Ghost... I'm probably going to put this deck together. If you play blue-black control with four Ghost Quarters... Your opponent fetches that you shadow of doubt it. You draw a card, you've stone rained them once, and then you use your in play ghost quarter to hit their other land that they also can't search for. And then your opponent just cries and folds. <laughs> 
Yeah, blue black. I think I it's see, Jace I blue black a, control deck could be pretty real right now. There. That's pretty good. At the bottom of Patrick's deck. Uh, and then Brent will get to search for uh, maybe his basic island he might have. Yeah, I don't know. Well, he, he does. I don't, would he play basic island for what? So most people only play one basic in Affinity. Some people play zero. But if you're playing in Soul Artifact, oh right, that makes. And sense. you have a mountain, you might also have the island. Yeah. I so it's possible Brent has the island and the the mountain. But uh, yeah, Saddle the Wreck is pretty good here. Assuming that uh, Brent does not, you know, play around the. Uh, I guess Brent could play around Settler the Wreckage by swinging with two signal pests only. Just the signal pests. And just pests. get in for two yeah. damage that way. And then just get them blocked by Celestial Colonnade. Do you think that Patrick fires up Colonnade this early? To block a free signal pest, sure. Wrath of God. That's a good one. Yeah. Even, even your protection from all colors isn't going to save you there. So, in response, Brent is going to uh, flash in a, uh, a, a Starfield of Nyx, zero cards and so it kills the Detention Sphere, and he gets that, back that his... Okay, well, <laughs> for one, because I can't think of a way to flash in a Starfield of Nyx right now. <laughs> I'm like, quicken, Scout's Warning, nope, that doesn't work. <laughs> you have to have a Leyline of Anticipation. Leyline of Anticipation, that's right. <laughs> and, and we do uh, the Settler Wreckage. Another Settler nice. Wreckage. Do you think Patrick just gets in there with Colin? Oh, that's the same or? Settler oh, Wreckage. Yeah. No, he was on the bottom of his library, so oh. he just drew it. Yeah, we're in there. All right, sure. The you can does does Patrick have a path in hand? I don't know, because you can like you you have to be a little bit scared of like cranial plating ink moth. Well, ink moth is an island. Oh yeah. See, I didn't know because they <laughs> didn't do it correctly. How Put, many turn the freaking land over and give Patrick the spreading seas? Oh, in, in Mark's theoretical blue black control, like how many Hercules recalls are you running? Um, you probably would need it. Um, probably just one or two, though. But you you would need it if Lantern was still a thing. If it were just for affinity, you could find other ways to win that matchup. Yeah. All right, attacking again with our, our Colonnade. So Brent just found a Signal Pest, which is a pretty pretty meager threat on its own. You know what you are playing as a one-of in your blue-black control deck with four Ghost Quarters and three Shadow of Doubt? It's your favorite standard card. Mind Lock or Oh, the Scarab God? The Scarab God. Yeah. Hell yeah. Card be pretty good as a one of in. Uh, oh well, Brent does have a basic po possibly island. out of the sideboard. He just drew his base. Oh, that was not a basic island. That was an ornithopter. Wow, <laughs> my that favorite card didn't even recognize it. <laughs> that, is, that is the worst. That's it. That's a ninth edition. Is that right? No, it's it's uh, seventh. I think seventh. Yeah. Here's snap. Oh yeah, it's because it's got a cranial plating. Man, we've seen three negates on they've three cranial been, platings. Yeah. These all be all. They've I all mean, been. You really got to get rid of that. So the problem is when the cranial plating comes down on like turn one. And right. uh, but hey, that's what do you know? And that is uh, a ninth edition ornithopter, you scumbag. Uh, it's uh, wh how is it white bordered? I thought ninth edition was black. Oh no, tenth, no, tenth edition. Oh, you're black right, you're bordered. right. Yeah, yeah. Well, seventh edition would be white, but it'd also be on an OG card frame. This is a modern card frame. Yeah, you're right. So it could be eighth or ninth, right? Yeah, I guess. But I'm not sure there was an eighth edition ornithopter. I don't actually know. Folks, tell us in chat. We're dumb. All I know is that that's the worst one at the top of There's like the OG one, which is like sweet. It's like a yes. weird like, yeah, like Leonardo, the da Vinci Leonardo da Vinci contraption. Leonardo da Vinci contraption. Yeah, that one's freaking awesome. And then awesome. there's the more recent one, which is kind of cool. There's one from Kaladesh, which was also cool. And then there's one the from Kaladesh is all right. The masterpiece one is. I like the, the painted look on the Kaladesh yeah. one. Uh, it looks like it's sort of like graffitied. Oh, it looks like it looks like Ornithopter is going to do what it does best. Jump block much larger creatures. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Single pest takes takes the bin. I feel like we one. value. Why would we block with single pass there? Well, single pass is a zero one, while ornithopter is a zero two. Yeah, that's true. But you can also there get him for two infect with uh, <laughs> with signal pass and ink moth nexus. There is no ink moth nexus. <laughs> it's an island. Okay, a future ink moth <laughs> okay, nexus. Sure. God, someone please put this spreading seas back on Patrick's <laughs> side of the table and flip over this. Mark ink moth. cannot handle. Oh. I can't deal with it. Well, that's not bad. You can actually, if you cast both, you actually might be better at blowing up the spreading seas here. We got our end soul back. Is, are you just gonna swing for five? Yep. Oh, dark steel. You can't. Sure. You can't swing for five. Sure, swing for five. Yeah. But not putting it on the ornithopter. Oh. So although it's indestructible. Yeah, single plast doesn't actually have flying, right? It has like. It has no, but it can't be blocked. It can only be blocked by creatures with right, reach so, or but flying. But it can't block colonnade. That is an error. You are right. 
Uh, we should notify Brendan. Oh, yeah. That he's gonna, he That's should, he should that was actually an illegal play, <laughs> not yeah. just a bad <laughs> well, one. We, we actually have to. Scott, if you could notify Brent. No, don't. Well, I, I, think that, I think you have to. Right? I, 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 I'm, at this point, I'm so confused about what we should or should not notify people about, but I don't think that's a big deal. I mean, we're switching out signal pests for ornithopter, essentially. All right. This is just, this is all questionable from a, a retroactive rules standpoint. Like, obviously, it's the easiest yeah, fix, so we got a judge and it makes call. perfect sense, but... Yeah, right. Correctly, correctly, players got a, a judge call. All right, well, good good thing we're wasting more time on it. This is if good. If Watsi didn't make teamer text on signal pest moronic, we wouldn't have this problem. Make what? I think it's supposed to say the text on signal pest. <laughs> this, person, this person plays so much magic <laughs> that their laptop <laughs> corrects the word the to teamer. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. Oh, that's funny. Uh, what are they? Well, sorry, what's their actual thought? That the the, the, the wording on signal pest is garbage, which might be correct. Oh, well, it, uh, probably the original Mirrodin one. Yeah, it's probably yeah. templating is bad. What does it say? Can't be blocked except by creatures with reach or flying. Uh, something like that. It could say can only be blocked, but well, I don't know. I don't know. It seems like the most because it doesn't have flying. No, that's it, that's by it design. Has, like, weird pseudo flying. Yeah, it's well. Think about it. If you were a signal pest traveling through a field of, you know wheat that's made out of razor sharp blades could you be blocked by creatures without flying i don't think so i could probably not it, it would take a scarecrow a spider or a bird that's it all of which have reach or flying yeah definitely <laughs> a deadly a deadly recluse perhaps apparently we are deep into this judge call. <laughs> I, am, I am really uh, <laughs> i can't believe we bothered to Whose fault is this? Did Patrick think of this no. autonomously, or is this no, your fault, Mario? It in chat. No, 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 Mario. This is your fault. <laughs> All right, so we've rolled back. Look, we lost thirty viewers since this judge call happened. No, it's, it's been fluctuating. <laughs> um, now both Ornithopter and Signal Plus are currently in play. Oh <laughs> well, that seems like the great outcome for Brent. <laughs> I don't think that's correct. Okay. All right. Uh, All right. Wait, wait, we're too far. Okay. So, right. so I think because neither player noticed it, we, we just leave it as is, and we move on. And now Ornithopter is a yeah, five, that's, five flight. That's what I think is the correct. Because the thing is, you can't retroactively correct that many decisions if you assume that right. you know, different decisions would, could have or would have been made by either player based on the false reality they, they Well, Brent still can't attack, though, because he just dies on the, the swing. So. Oh, and he's going to die to snap beats. If he doesn't find something quick, I think he's just dead. Here, unless he has a galvanic blast, I guess could kill the colony yeah. or something. Patrick being very careful with his lands there. Well played. All right, we're in there for eight, and that will do it for game two. Springly a drum in hand there. Yeah, folks, that was a. Uh, that was exciting. Oh my um, god! What do we think is happening in game three? I want to see. Uh, I want to see Brent with a um, some of the good anti-control threats. Number one, the Aura go graveyard. Now that that is not the case. The aura does get to be reattached. Yeah, no, it, it it's just like Zer. Yeah, if you look up Zer Enchanter spreading seas, Zer the Enchanter in any aura. Um, this is also. It's also. If you open the vaults with auras in your graveyard, <laughs> yes. this also happens. Or or if you Brunelite of Alabaster and attack, uh, yes. it's kind of similar to that. The auras don't target. If, if you um, reanimate an aura with a Starfield of Nyx, also you get this yep, effect. Yep. If you uh, if you bring back a Hopeful Eidolon with an Orzhov charm, yes. Uh, that's well, actually that doesn't work. You can't bestow. Never mind. <laughs> that that scratch that one. Anyway, folks. Uh, now that we're out of the that rabbit hole, the spreading has been consumed into Brent's deck. <laughs> Hopefully, you <laughs> noticed that. Oh, did he really? Uh, so that's what Chad said. <laughs> See what I tell you, people. You gotta listen to me. If someone's spreading seeds, yep, yep, we found it. Yeah, good, good call, guys. Someone, yeah, thank you so much, Chad. <laughs> if someone's spreading seeds is you, <laughs> flip over your land, hand them back their spreading seeds, and tell them to yeah, put it on their board the like it's their permanent. There. And Brent, Brent just draws spreading seeds. He like puts it on his opponent's colonnade. <laughs> yeah. And and like, Patrick's I'll, Patrick's I'll like, huh? Oh, that's some trip. sweet affinity tech. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, I wanted to say, uh, Brent needs. Yeah, the tension, eg the tension sphere exiles and soul. Would you stop quacking? I, I'm trying to say the same I'm, thing. I'm talking to the chat. Brent needs 
his uh, his anti control threats, namely that card I can't think of the name of the three drop enchantment that's red. Gear for Aethergrid. Gear for Aethergrid. I think we want that one here. I think we almost certainly want that. It means we can kill our opponents with Dark Steel Citadels if we have to. And he yes. gets us through Stony, which we assume Patrick has one or two of. All right, so Imper Impera the Rogers, Im Imperado Rogers, Detention exiles the Unsoul, yes, and then you destroy Detention, and then it is returned from exile back into play. And you're not... Mark, you would not be a fan of Gonti if spreading seas causes you to react like this. Yeah, that might be true when you when you take your opponent's card into exile. Oh, I I've actually never I've never played in a match where someone has resolved a Gonti. So you're right, I probably would. Is Gonti being played in standard right now? Yeah, he's pretty popular. Is he in blue black mid range? Uh, yeah. It's also like it's like the single hand, it's the single best card against my deck. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> because like all every card in my deck is so good against me myself, so it's just really annoying. I so people have a lot of opinions about the best card in standard right now. You know. Some people would say it's that Rekindling Phoenix. Some people would say it's Hazard or Chandra or Scarab God. Or I think the best card in standard right now, <laughs> by a huge mile, is, can you guess? Um, basic Glint Island. Sieve oh. Siphoner. Yeah, that's good. That card is insane. I mean, it's basically Dark Confidant with Menace card is literally insane. So it looks like Brent is carefully thinking over his hand. Looks like he decided to keep. We'll see if he has one of those classic explosive turn one affinity starts. And it's looking strong already. You'd always prefer the Mem Knight to be an Ornithopter, but other than that, yeah. this is okay. All right, that's not bad. Do we have something... If he has a plating to follow this up on, too. If we had a Mox Opal and then played a plating... Now that would have been sweet. Yeah, I mean that would have been just the nuts, but. Well, never mind. Plating's a plating's a two drop, so he would have needed a double Mox Opal to play the plating, <laughs> and that would be his whole hand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, looks like Patrick does have a path. That's pretty good. Is this the first path we've seen for Patrick? I think so. Yeah. Maybe he's only playing uh, playing two. Also, these are dual deck paths that Patrick has. Yeah. Venser versus Koth. Big fan of that art. Here's Ornithopter. Here's Mountain. And we do have Cranial Plating. This hand desperately needed a Signal Pest. But Cranial Plating will do just fine. So, I guess you... Yeah. So... So, this is a, this is a big attack. Uh, I'm sure Volt Scourge is... Is this for five? Pass. Is this for six? Um, so, we're going to... One, two, three, four, five... It, the tag is for seven, <coughs> but false scourge will get passed, and it'll only be for one. So Patrick has to hope he has a bunch of his the spot removal spells, though. Snapcasters. Yeah, settle the wreckage could be okay if he gets to it, and Brent doesn't play around it. Um, but if Brent finds a signal pest before Patrick gets to four mana. And Patrick does not find any more spot removal. Uh, some of the records might be too slow. Well, Brent did not have another basic land to go find. Another negate for Patrick. Do we think this one will hit a cranial plating? Uh, I don't. Mostly because. Ooh. Oof. Well, that is. Ooh. Oh, man. So this, wow. hand, this hand from Brent is still fine. Um, no, well, Brent's last card is Wear Tear, but he can't cast it. Sure, but he'll never be able to cast it. What's What's key here is that uh, Brent does have the basic mount, which means he can cast Gearpor Aether Grid um, fairly fairly easily, um, as long as he. We not swinging for two? No, he's, he's We're swinging for one. He tried to He tried to destroy the Stony Silence, but he cannot use Spring Leaf Drum to. Yeah, can't use Spring Leaf Drum for mana. I guess if he had a non-artifact creature, he could though, right? Because no, you have to tap the spring jump as well. Never yeah, mind. yeah. Man, that's that's yeah, super so <laughs> yeah, the activated. Yeah, the I guess you can never cast. No, he can get. He has a lot of ways to cast it. For one, he can cast it with any glimmer void or. Okay, um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Glimmer void or course, spire, spire of industry. Of industry. Yes. But also the base. Like I said, the basic mountain here is really pretty good to have. Um, <laughs> Introducing stony silence in the red corner. That's it. 
Th is that how we should commentate, like like the old uh, WWE wrestler <laughs> yeah, commentators? In the, in the red corner. <laughs> Wall of Omens? Wall of Omens is Patrick misses good. land drop. Wall of Omens is... Oh, wow, really? Yeah. That's actually big news. But Wall of Omens is also very good to block these ornithopters. Ooh. So we got a Spire of Industry, which means we can blow up yeah, that Stony Silence. And we could also blow up... Uh, Man, that, if Patrick left him from the gate. Yeah, he should have left him the gate. <laughs> you know what... Uh, you know what Brent should have done is he should he should blow up his own cranial here. Nope. Yeah, you're okay. right. The Memnite should not have been able to attack there. We're too far gone, though. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, he just did he play that one and then swung Haste it. I want that Memnite. Yeah, me too. Yeah, they have it. It's called Bomac Courier. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's close. So we're in there for a bunch. Do you remember when Bomac Courier first came out and people were trying it in Infinity? It was actually pretty sweet. Yeah. It was not bad. So Patrick needs a land next turn or he's just dead. He found it. All right. All right. He was getting the trials, I think, to suppress the Ornithopter. Yeah. Or he could go Snap Path. So the, the, the Snap Path would be fine, too. I think trials is not great because you can just move the plating to a Memnite and then kill the Wall of Omens when he blocks. Well, the Snap Path is bad if, if he finds another colored source. Yeah. And he's just dead. But I guess he was dead with Gideon anyway. So. All right. What are we doing here? So we can f we could fire. Oh, that's good. We could fire up Blink Moth. Do we have the mana to fire up Blink Moth and transfer it? No. Why? What? So I think you're actually. It's kind of awkward, but you. A good play there might have been to just not play Signal Pest, fire up Blink Moth, and then move. Threaten to move. Um, so I think Patrick's gonna cast this and click himself so he can draw another land. That's a really I good guess. play. So hear me out. If Brent would have just not played Signal Pest, he could have activated Blink Moth and swung with Ornithopter, Blink Moth, and both Mem Knights, and then had or leave back one Mem Knight, and then have and two black mana instant speed. instant speed cranial. Yeah. yeah, and that line could get there against a lot of different wow. cards that Patrick could have, but not against all of them. Okay, so down goes click. Patrick drew a a verdict, but he doesn't have a fourth land yet. So, if he draws the fourth land, we can still lose to... If he draws the fourth land in Verdict, he just loses to Blink Moth Cranial, right? Uh, that's only three artifacts. So one. No. So he'd hit for four, so he'd go to yeah, one. He'd go to one. <laughs> he'd go to one and be off fetch lands. we're just going to pass. He has Cryptic. Do he, does he have Settler Wreckage? No, he's Cryptic. Oh, well, if he has Cryptic, then you can still you can still win here. Because if you activate all your guys except for Blink Moth, he Cryptic's taps. Yeah. Unless Patrick goes, like, tap, bounce, Blink Moth. But Which he might. you can play around the, the cryptic tap with the uh, the man land here. So yeah. let's see how Brent plays this. Uh, he's got to respect Settler Wreckage and Cryptic, well, which uh, definitely changes how you play it to begin. No, oh, don't. Oh, okay. I don't think you have enough mana to re-equip Cranial Plating. Yeah, you got two black. If you... Uh, no, because you, you need... You, would, you wouldn't have enough mana to do what you were doing. No, he, just, he needed to use his mountain to activate that. There's no way he would have a mana to activate equip cranial plating twice. Oh, you're right. He has to activate yeah. Blink Moth and equip. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. yeah, he's one mana short. Yep. I'm kind of curious why we didn't attack with uh, Mem Knight's last turn, but whatever. So, are we going to snap cast or block a Mem Knight? No, snap path the Blink Moth because now our verdict just cleans the board up. Block the two Mem Knights. Yeah, Patrick has played this game very well. Brent, unfortunately, not so much. He, he probably could have. Well, he did swing with that haste Mem Knight, so you gotta you gotta give it to him. He's getting all the uh, <laughs> all the, the juice blue, out of his cards. I think the blue white control assumes that Affinity Dude will do the wrong thing every time, as it's been pretty consistent. Um, all right, uh, that might be you know. I think that's overstating some, it. Maybe he's had some uh, not great lines, but. So if he, if he finds another one of those hasty Memnites, though, that could get the job done. <laughs> so do we think that Brent has no Galv Blast? And now he's playing, he's and opted Ensel for... Ensel would do it here. Ensel for... Oh, it would do it. <laughs> Cast Ensel on anything and swing for five? <laughs> oh, man. That would have been, been sick. Is no, that what we drew? Ravager. Oh. Well, that's not great, but... No. <laughs> man, <laughs> Ensel on the cranial plate. Yeah, dude, I didn't even think that totally would have won so in the game. So sweet. But now I think he's just way too far behind. Uh, God, if he would have drawn a uh, <laughs> if he would have drawn a uh, a Galblast there, he wouldn't have even had Metalcraft. 
Patrick has two Cryptics and Gideon and some other White Blessed Alliance. I which think. which Gideon? Three Drop? Yeah. Three Drop Gideon's pretty good in this matchup, honestly. So Patrick's man is actually kind of awkward there. He had to use both white yeah. for the Gideon. Yeah, right. So he, which means he can't bless. I think that's a blessed alliance. Yeah, I think it is. It, it'd be nice if he could hold that up. So we're we're still we're still cold to a to he doesn't soul off the top. Patrick doesn't have negate or logic not in hand, no. does he? So that means, uh, yeah, we are dead to uh, to end soul artifact. Oh, plating. Oh man. Well, actually, can we? Oh, he named. So he plussed up on yeah, Ravagers, Ravagers, so we're not yeah. doing any damage of that. And now I think I think this turn with a double cryptic. Yeah, this is where we lose. Yeah. Emblem Gideon. The field of ruin here is uh is actually a wasteland. Or it's a better than a wasteland. It's a well, it's pay two mana. Assuming Brent doesn't have another land, which he probably doesn't because he didn't switch yeah, the path. Yeah, that'll do it. Earlier. Patrick has blessed lines and two cryptics, so there's no way Brent can get through this. What was that? Is that the is that the insult on top right there? I don't know what he drew. Uh, I think that's it. It's just a turn too late. It looks like a green card, honestly, but I can't imagine. It could be a mirror and metal. I don't know what that is. That is a Galv Blast, except for it's a giant growth. Oh. It's plus two, plus two, or plus four, plus four on Metalcraft. Which is a sweet way to infect kill your opponent in Affinity. <laughs> sure. Play uh, four of those and one Rancor. Uh, well, we are equipping Cranial Plating onto our Ravager, which is one, two, three, four. It's a nine, nine, or nine, one, nine, one, I suppose. In a blessed alliance, not even gaining the four. Oh, life. not even. <laughs> what is? Well, I guess he figured that his he opponent could have cryptic. spell pierce, and he can leave up cryptic. Sure, definitely correct. But come on. So let's see how long it takes uh, Blue Eye Control to actually close this game well, we're out. Gideon, so it shouldn't be that long. Well, but the question is, is Patrick gonna? Patrick might just take the conservative I think he line. Just another stony. Yeah, no, Patch not hitting the conservative line. We're in there. We're in yeah. there, Gideon. I guess I guess he already took the conservative line last turn with making yeah. the emblem. So, oh, another stony. Oh, it hurts. What was that? <laughs> if we had Galvlas here, we survivors in camp. Is that really a survivors in camp? Yeah. That's, I guess that's a budget option. That that could. No wait, someone was actually right on the call. No, it's eighth right. Okay. <laughs> Somebody said it was a choke. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> wow, that would that would be deep. But no, just the eighth grid. Oh, man, that eighth grid would have been yeah, really good been like sweet. three turns ago. That would have been sweet. Ugh. Actually, no, wait. Eighth grid does nothing through Stony Silence. Yes, well, yes it does. It does that's, it, that's why it's that's yeah, mainly right. why, that's it's why it's played. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the art. It's the enchantment's ability. Yeah. All right. All right, folks. Let's back it up. Yeah, Gideon makes quick work of opponents. <laughs> three cranium. Usually three platings is uh, is pretty good, but it's kind of like Aethergrid uh, does nothing versus Gideon trials plus one though. You are correct. You plus one on the yeah, you plus grid. one on the Aethergrid, sure. Thanks for keeping us honest here. Um, what was I? Uh, th oh, having three platings in the blue white control matchup is kind of like what it feels like to have three Ronasi Indomitable in your Zoo deck against the Jun deck. Like, oh man, this card's sweet. It's indestructible. <laughs> But if you just terminate my knight or smiter over and over, you're automatically two for wanting me, and these Ronuses are worthless. <laughs> yeah. That's sort of what it's like to, to draw three oh, plays. Oh, goes to one. All right, let's see the big plays. Do we have a worship? Worship would not get us there. <laughs> nope, man. Mox Opal, definitely not. So that'll do it. Some Close one. Uh, there might have been some lines Brent could have taken to, to lock that one up many turns earlier, but... You gotta give it to him though. And when him. you're swinging with the uh, hasty mem knights, he's doing all he can. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is. Tr I guess that's true. <laughs> for for every line that he made that was suboptimal, <laughs> he made up for it with that one extra damage that he just <laughs> pulled out of sheer force of will and cunning. <laughs> yeah, just just snuck it right by his opponent. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, swing for one. <laughs> Man, I an opponent of mine tried to horribly scumbag me on Wednesday night here by swinging with us. They thought they'd won a game easily and they miscalculated an attack and neglected to think that I had a removal spell in hand, and so they swung out wantonly, and I almost blew them out um, to avoid, to, to reduce their chances of being blown out in their perception 
they tried to swing with a snapcaster that was replayed that turn. Oh. They had bounced their own snapcaster with Jace to play cryptic tap my team as a quick way to close yeah. out the game, not thinking I had a, a bolt in hand to bolt a Vendillion click. And so my opponent, he's like sits there all confused and scared. And I'm like, all right, well, uh, that's only, he's like, no, it's 11. I'm like, no, it's only nine. I'm at 10 life. I'm like, no, it's only nine. He's like, I'm like, you can't swing with that snap because he's like, oh, yeah, right. I can't swing with that snap caster. <laughs> I hope people scumbags, people, the they're scumbags. What has happened? Um, well, you can go back and watch the match. They're all posted on our YouTube channel. Yeah, and um, you can watch them on our YouTube yeah, you channel. Yeah, anyone, and Jack could also watch them. Mario, tell them about the YouTube Patreon. Channel. Additionally, you can support us either through subscribing to the channel. If you have Twitch Prime, you get a free subscription, so we would much appreciate it if you use it here. Or additionally, if you want to support us more directly and also get some rewards for yourself, potentially, you can find us on Patreon and sign up for any value monthly subscription. And if you are in the Cincinnati area, um, you can also participate in Patreon-exclusive Top Deck Productions leagues here that are at GameSwab. Our first one is currently running. It's just for the mar month of March, but we plan to continue those after this month. And those, uh, those leagues also include some nice prizes. So check us out on Patreon if you want to support the channel. To have us continuing to improve our content, and the YouTube channel, etc., including things like next week's, um, I don't actually know what it's called, Battle of Star City Pro. Battle of, yeah, the Battle <laughs> of, uh, yep. Uh, I, some of the Star City Pro players of Team BCW, yes, Team BCW, they will be here next week playing against some of the local players. So also if you're in the area and you want to come out to that, please do join us. Uh, by the way, one more quick thing to add. Mario was talking about Patreon. Um, I just had a uh, a revelation. Uh, Patreon is an anagram for not rape. Um, okay. So I guess that a moral lesson, don't you know? Uh, okay. Um, that's all. We, all right. Round five. Thank folks. you to whoever we'll see you for round five. Um, <laughs> Well, 